Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Hello, how are you? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Learn French with Anubhav. If you have already subscribed to my channel, press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In today's class, we are continuing with the textbook Coup de Long et de Civilisation Française by G. Moshe, Millennium Edition, Volume 2, recommended for CBSE Class 11 and 12 students. So, we have already completed the Culture de Civilisation portion, that is the text and the back questions from chapter number 1 to chapter number 30. Right. So, now we are to start with the grammar portion, hence we are starting right from lesson number 1. And uh, since we have lesson 1 to 17 for class 11, the full-fledged syllabus, so the videos that I'll be posting for on the grammar portion from chapter 1 to 17 will be added to the playlist titled G. Moshe, Volume 2, CBSE Class 11. Okay. So, Let's start with the grammar discussion for chapter number one, lesson 1, un voyage à travers la France. So, grammar, first topic is verb transitive et verb intransitive. Okay. So, broadly, we are having two categories of verbs, transitive and intransitive. So what's written in the book? Distinction important pour la formation du passif pour voir la son de. Very true. Like uh, this, the knowledge of transitive and intransitive is very much required in order to be able to solve the questions or in, in order to even do this active and passive voice. Right. So for that we will be discussing in the next chapter, like next video for the passive part. Right. So, Monsieur Vincent quitte Paris. Number one. And Monsieur Vincent part. Number two. What's the difference? Mr. Vincent quits Paris or leaves Paris. And another one, Mr. Vincent leave. leaves. Okay. Now, in the first one, there's a complement of object. Complement d'objet. There's an object. In the second one, there's none. So when there is a complement of object, it is transitive, and when there isn't any, it is intransitive. Okay. For example, like uh, they have given here, Monsieur Vincent quitte Paris. Right. La verb quitter a un complément d'objet, which is Paris. Right. That's why on l'appelle un verb transitive. That's why the verb is called transitive in this case. Similarly, la verb parti n'a pas de complément d'objet. The verb parti is not having any complement of object. So, on l'appel, uh, un verb intransitive. So, we call it an intransitive verb. Now, verb transitive direct et verb transitive indirect. Now, transitive can be further divided into direct and indirect. Concept is very easy. Before direct, there won't be any a or the. And before indirect, there has to be a or the. Right. Basically, these mean what? A means to, sometimes it means in as well. The means of or from. So, these things are present in indirect transitive, but are not present in direct transitive. Okay. For example, the initial example, Monsieur Vincent Keith Pari, it didn't have any uh, a or the. So, it's what? Direct transitive. Hmm. That's what is written here. Monsieur Vassa Keat Pari. Monsieur Vassa Pons Asa Patri. Monsieur Vassa Pal de Sa Patri. Mr. Vincent quits Paris. Direct. Transitive direct. Mr. Vincent thinks of his uh, country. Uh, indirect transitive. And uh, Mr. Vassa talks about his. Uh, uh, patri, the country, and so here it would be the ordination. Uh, so again, since there is the, it will be what? Transitive, direct, right. Uh, transitive, direct, that's what it's written here. La verbe quitter a un complément d'objet direct, sans a ou de. Il est transitive, direct. Since the verb quitter is having a complement of object, that which is the direct object, without any a or the, that's why the verb is here, transitive, direct. And uh, les verbes penser parler ont un complément d'objet indirect 
avec a ou de, ils ont transitive and direct. So the verb to think or to speak, both of them are having a complement of object uh, with an indirect thing, so a and the, right? So they are, these verbs are transitive indirect in this case. Remark, there's a remark as well. Certain complements precede the a ou de ne sont pas des complements d'objet indirect, mais des complements circonstanciés. It could be the lieu, it could be the ton, etc. It could be moyen as well. So, certain complements or certain complements precede, preceding with the a or the are not the complement of the indirect object. Okay, but they are the complement of circumstances, circumstances, circumstances. For example, complement of place, complement of time, complement of means or medium. For example, nous partons d'où de Paris, lieu. Nous partirons quand à cette heure, complément de, du temps, right? Nous voyagerons comment à bicyclette. It's the medium, means. So, moyen, complément du moyen. So, that was all for the first part of the grammar portion of this chapter. Now, we are to discuss the second part of it. So, genre des noms, the pays et de province. So, the genre of the nouns of the, or the names of uh, countries and the province. Very easy. Premier, uh, son féminin. Les noms terminés par i. So, if the verb is, if the word is ending with an e, we take it, if the country's name is ending with an e, we take it to be as feminine. For example, la Belgique, la Turquie, la Flandre, la Bretagne, right? Uh, but there are some ex exceptions. For example, la Mexique. Zer, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and la Mexique. These four are the exceptions that we have. Like they end with an E, but still they are masculine, right? So, so here only one example is given as of now, Le Mexique, the Mexico. And what are the uh, masculine ones? Like so masculine, en général, les autres noms, the nouns which are, the names of the country which are not ending with an E, they are primarily taken to be as what? Masculine. For example, Le Brésil, the Brazil, Le Canada, the Canada, right? These two are what? Masculine. Now, on et o. When to use en and when to use o. Au. So on may généralement on devant les noms de pays féminins du singulier. Singulier. Okay. So we put uh, en generally in front of the uh, name of the feminine countries which are singular. Okay. Number B. Devant les noms masculins du singulier. singulier Commence par une voyelle. Okay. So, number two, in front of the uh, countries which are masculine, which the name is masculine, but they are beginning with a vowel. For that reason, we uh, use en instead of au. Singular masculine countries, the name beginning with a vowel, we use en in that case as well. It's very much similar to what we do in adjective possessive, right? So, uh, for example, je vais en France. France is feminine, so en France and en Iran. So, Iran is masculine, but it's beginning with I. That's why we are using en. And it's singular. Okay. Now, on met o, o, uh, devant les autres noms. So, masculine uh, countries, au. For example, j'ai vécu au Japon, I lived in Japan. Au Brazil, in Brazil. Ozidatsuni, AUX for the plural ones. So Ozidatsuni, the United States, Ozonti, the West Indies, right? To the West Indies or in the West Indies. Okay. Now we are coming, we have already discussed this text portion. So now we are coming to these questions. Dito autrement, je suis très occupé. I am very tired. You can say it in this way as well. Je suis extrêmement pris. Another way of saying I am very tired. Oh, sorry. Fatigue is tired. Occupé is busy. So, yeah. Je suis extrêmement pris. I am uh, 
very much occupied or I am extremely taken, like if we do the uh, exact uh, sort of translation, right? Then, Ronthre Apari, uh, you can use uh, Revenir or uh, Returne Apari, right? Uh, and this one, La Fonce et la Pays de mes Pères. You can write it as La Fonce et la Terre de mes Ancêtres. Very easy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. La Fonce et la Terre de mes Ancêtres. France is the land of my ancestors. Another way of saying the France is the country of my fathers, forefathers, right? Uh, now, next one we have uh, Mette dans des phrases, flâne la tempête uh, si nous faisions, si nous partirons. So, you have these uh, words given to you and you need to form phrases with it, right? So, since it's an open ended question, I won't be doing this as of now. Like you can uh, take, of course, you can take help from these words are there from this chapter only, right? Uh, like flâne, which means to stroll. Then we have. Uh, This thing. Si nous faisions. Uh, if we made, I mean, fair in uh, empathy. Si nous partirons, partions. If we would have left or if we left. So, in this case, you can form a pretty well sentence. It's like it's with C. So, you can do the C clause thing. C plus empathy is what? Present conditional. Right, so following that you can form the sentences here, right. Now, next one we have, oh yeah, tompet is what? Storm. So you can uh, make a sentence with that as well. Anyways. Écrivez le début de la lecture jusqu'à absent. Okay, so how much you need to write? From here, eh bien, monsieur Vincent, till here, longtemps absent. Now, what you need to do here? You need to do uh, what? Vous vous adresserez à un ami en le tutoyant, en lui disant tout. Eh bien, mon cher ami. Understood. So, what you need to do is, like you need to, as if you are saying, you are addressing this whole thing to your friend, and you are addressing your friend as tu. Okay. And then you will begin like, eh bien, uh, mon cher ami. A quoi pensez-vous? A quoi penses-tu? A votre chez Canada? A ton chez Canada? Okay. In that way. Vous avez beaucoup d'articles? Tu as beaucoup d'articles. So following that, you need to convert from here till abs absent. It is very easy. Again, uh, so what are the changes that are going to happen? Whenever there is vous, it will change to tu. Okay. Uh, Number one. Number two, adjective possessive will get changed. Okay. Uh, number three, since subject is changing, the conjugation of verb will also change. Right. Earlier it was with second person plural. Now the conjugation will be with what? Second person singular. Right. Uh, you can, uh, instead of, like, there's one place where it's written she musia in the middle as well. So she musia, she rami. Okay. Musia can be changed to she, uh, uh, she rami. Right. And what else? I mean, if there's a pronoun vu, then that could be changed to te or toi, depending on the statement formation. And, uh, yeah. Et comment voyagerez-vous? Futu sample. So you can make it as, et comment voyagerez-tu? Right. So in this way, you can do the entire thing. It's pretty easy. We can move to the next question, chapter number, uh, question number four. Tu veux dans la lecture trois verbes transitifs direct, un verbe transitif indirect, trois verbes intransitifs. Faites une phrase avec chacun de ces verbes. So you need to, okay, from this text you need to find three transitive direct verbs, one transitive indirect verb and three intransitive verb. Okay. And what's the identification? We know it pretty well. So, a uh, direct intransitive verb will be having a complement d'objet without any a or the. Transitive and direct will be having a complement d'objet avec a ou de. 
right? A la valve intensitive n'a pas de complément d'objet. Okay, so using this, you can again do it pretty well. I'm not doing fourth as well. Try finding it out from the text and let me know in the comment section, right? And then I'll tell if it's right or not. I mean, you should also give it a try. I mean, I'm not doing all the questions. You also try by yourself. Question number five, we are, we are going to do. Don't worry. So, dans les phrases suivantes, dites si les compléments sont okay. In the previous question, once you have identified these verbs, you need to form sentences as well. You can take the help from the text itself. Dans les phrases suivantes, uh, dites si les comple compléments sont objets indirects, à quoi, de quoi, ou circonstancié, de temps, quand, de lieu, ou, de manière, comment. So, uh, in the following phases, tell uh, which are, if the complements of the objects are indirect, to what or of what. Or circumstances, complement of or circumstances uh, like uh, of time, when, of uh, place, where, or of the manner, how, right? So, mes parents habite à Lille. Complement d'objet having this a before that, so it becomes transitive direct. Mes parents habite à Lille. Habiter here is Transitive direct. Il pense à sa patrie. Il pense à sa patrie. Again, it's transitive direct. Very easy. Direct transitive. Uh, tu parles de tes dernières vacances. Again, it is transitive direct. Right. Wait. Oh, oh, what am I saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's indirect. I mean, so so the it's transitive uh, direct and avec a the it's transitive and direct, which means me pardon a bit ali indirect object transitive and direct il pense à sa partie transitive and direct sa partie preceded by a and tu parles de tes dernières vacances. This is also transitive. And direct, really sorry, I have been saying to direct, direct, direct for so long now. Right, it, all three are intransitive, sorry, oh God, this is too confusing. All three are transitive, indirect. Yeah, transitive, indirect. Mes parents habitent à Lille, ils pensent à sa patrie et tu parles de tes dernières vacances. Now, j'arrive de Strasbourg, I arrive from Strasbourg. J'arrive de Strasbourg, from where? Do. So, it is what? Complement circonstancié de lieu. Okay. Complement circonstancié de lieu. Next one. Nous voyageons de plusieurs façons en auto, à bicyclette, à pied. Comment? How? It's asking for the medium. So, it is a complement du moyen. Okay. And the next one. Il parlera. Hmm, so, the habita lille. Okay, here we have to talk about the complements. Okay, in the first two, it, it's indirect. In the fourth one, Strasbourg one, it is a... Uh, this thing, circumstancié, uh, of place, nous uh, voyager dans de plusieurs façons, this sentence is having circumstancié du moyen, and il parlera dans son voyage à ses amis. Hmm. He speak, uh, he'll speak of, of his trip to his friends. This will be what? To uh, ses amis. Yeah, this will be Transitive and direct. Okay, so first tweet uh, transitive and direct. Then the next two we have circumstancié and the last one again transitive and direct, objet and direct. Okay, examinez les noms de pays en italique dans la lecture. À propos de chacun de, dites pour qui, pourquoi il est précédé de en ou de au. Okay, so you need to see there are some countries in italics in the chapter in the text, and we need to tell why. Some are having O and why some are having E N. 
So, au Brazil, why au Brazil? It's masculine singular. En Angleterre, because uh, it's beginning with a vowel, right? And it's feminine. En Russie, uh, ending with an e, it is feminine. That's why en Russie. Uh, au Maroc, Morocco, Mor Maroc. Uh, it's a masculine country. That's why au. Fine. Réalisez la lecture famille. Euh, livre dit en trois ou quatre coudes, phrase quels sont les projets de M. Vincent. Very easy, I mean, we read the text and close the book and talk about the entire plan of uh, Mr. Vincent. So that, of course, you got to do by yourself. And with this, we are done with the, like technically, we are done with the entire lesson one from this chapter. So yeah, in the next video, I'll be taking up lesson two grammar. So let's put a halt here. Say to Pushudi, that's all for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn Finch and Above. And if you have any doubts or suggestions, you may write that in the comment section below. You may also like my Facebook page by the same name, Learn Finch and Above. See you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Au revoir. New Repark. Long Fonces and Lamour.